Welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to be looking at this current sensing module that I showed in the last postback video. This is available for about five or six dollars on eBay. Um, and what's really neat about it is that it uses the magnetic field of the current flowing on these large tracks here in order to measure uh, the current. So that provides us with a couple of things. Firstly, it means there's no resistor that has to go in line in the current path, which you would need if you used, if you were measuring voltage over a, a shunt resistor. Even if the shunt resistor's value is very small, this is just a lot more like what you would expect out of a you know a pure ammeter, which would have zero ohms. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, and then the other thing is that it's galvanically isolated, or basically um, electrically isolated between these tracks that carry the current and our uh, control circuitry. And what that means for us is that uh, we can measure high voltages on this and uh, our control circuitry is isolated from that, uh, which is really nice. However, because it is a magnetic sensor, we do have some uh, you know, interference that can happen if you bring a magnet close to this. It will get quite messed up while the magnet is close. And I think it does introduce a little bit of drift. So I think we'll have to account for that in software by basically reading what it is when it's a zero and then uh, kind of updating that based on how it changes. As to the control circuitry side, um, this chip has three output pins here. Uh, these are VCC, ground, and then an output pin. You can see those uh, at the bottom here. We have, this is what gets con connected to the microcontroller, VCC, ground, out one. And that out one comes basically just through a small resistor directly from this pin. Out two, however, comes through this op amp on the back here, which is set up in a buffer configuration. And what that allows us to do is if we were to be driving any sort of a load, um, this uh, buffer chip basically keeps us from putting uh, that load uh, directly onto the Hall effect sensor and allows us to drive a slightly larger current. Um, basically keeps us from interfering with the measurement with our uh, with the circuitry that we're using to measure it. In our case we'll be using the ADS1115 16-bit ADC to measure it which should give us uh, which shouldn't be a problem either way because uh, that's going to have pretty high impedance inputs as well. So. We can probably read from either one, but just I'm going to read from output two just because that seems like it's probably what was intended. Um, so yeah, with that, let's get right to measuring some currents. Okay, and here's the testing setup. So on this panel here, you can see the voltage and current output of a DC to DC power supply that I have um, slightly behind it on this side. And that power is coming out on these two leads which end in alligator, alligator clips here and here. Uh, the um, constant current is set to about 2 amps so when I short that out you can see 2.6 amps on the ammeter there. When I short it out through the device, through the current sensor, we can see that this changes. Now it's very small, it's hard to read, I'll bring it up closer in a moment. But I just want to show you that current is flowing through the device. So when we start this device, there is um, a slight offset there. I think you can see amps is negative 4.2, negative 0.42. So what I've done is I've added a, a button here, which is this the boot zero. Um, connects to GPIO0 on this ESP32 uh, and what that does in this program is it just sets an offset so it's going to remember that this is actually zero. I'm not 100% certain how this affects the measurement or if we should be calculating for it better in some other way but what you will see is that when I short this out that reads just under 2 amps and let me connect the clip it's very hard to do in the camera. And 
and then we can see that that does jump around. We have maybe uh, 0.02 amps or 20 milliamps of of uh, resolution. So the other thing I wanted to show oh, shoot. So I wanted to show how the um, what what these first two uh, lines mean. The first one is measuring the supply voltage. Um, that's about 4.6 volts here, and that's just being pulled in from this 5 volt pin. I don't know why there's a voltage drop between the VCC, the USB voltage, and that, but um, in my test, USB voltage was something like 4.9 volts, and this was like 4.6. So I don't know exactly why that is. It doesn't. I mean, it's not going through a 5 volt regulator because that's a 3.3 .3 volt regulator. So maybe there's a diode or something that is going through because uh, that's a, a 0.3 volt drop. But um, I'm measuring that voltage and I'm setting where the center should be based on that voltage. So this for zero amps, that is, and this V out is. The, what's currently being measured from the device here. Um, I am measuring from Vout2. I guess I'm measuring from Vout1. Let me change that over. This is measuring from the buffered output here. You can see that voltage is 2.27, which is roughly half of that. Um, it's not as close as it should be, which is why I have that zeroing button. Um, so then this wire here takes that voltage and brings it over to my A1 here. A1 on that um, ADC chip. That I'm using to measure, and um, that then is this output voltage here. The amps is calculated based on the 40 milliamps, sorry, 40 millivolts per amp rating for this device that is comes from the data sheet, and um, using a zero uh, calculated based off of the center of the voltage that we are reading right now and that whatever offset we calculated when we pushed the, that button. And this is giving me, certainly to the closest amp, probably to the closest 100 milliamps, maybe a little bit better than that, but there is quite a lot of noise on it. So I don't think this will be suitable, suitable for what I'd originally hoped to use it for. But if you needed to measure something like 50 amps in one direction or another, this would give you, this would be a great option. So let's just show that working in the positive direction. There it is, 1.94 amps. And then I'm going to connect it up in reverse, show you that this is bi directional. And there it is. Let's see if I can get this flicker to go away. It's measuring a negative current. So this is the CJ MCU58. Um, this is how you connect it up to 
an ESP32 or a similar I squared C powered device. Thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe if you're interested in projects like this or if you want to see just how to use some of the different modules that I've uh, purchased. You've seen some of them in the mailbag segments. And uh, comment if you have a particular module you'd like to use or a project you have in mind. Um, yeah, and uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.